In this video, I'm gonna blow your minds out with five awesome and highly useful Excel tricks. Now that's a very bold promise to make, so let's make a deal at the start of the video. In case you know all the tricks that I'm gonna speak about in this video, I want you to comment shame, S-H-A-M-E. I'm gonna send hearts to your comments. And in case you do not know any one of the tricks that I'm gonna talk about in this video, I want you to comment which trick did you not know of. All right, I have a big promise to deliver. Let's get started. All right, trick number one is auto filter or filter by selection. Now in Excel, you have the ability of applying the filter by selecting a cell, but that's not pretty much evident on the screen. You have to go back to the settings of Excel and activate that little shortcut. So what do you do? You go over to your quick access toolbar. You can find it up on the top. You're going to see this drop down right here. In that, you're going to go and activate more commands. In that box right here, you see popular commands, but I'm not interested in that. I'm however interested in commands not in the ribbon, the things which are there in Excel, but you can't see them. Anyways, I'm gonna click on auto filter. I click on add and the auto filter has been added right here. It's very important to note the position on which you have added the auto filter. Mine in this case is four, your could be five, second, third, doesn't matter. However, remember the position on which you're adding the auto filter. I'm gonna click out of this and press okay and I'm back at my data. Now let's just say I wanna apply filters to this data. The easiest and the fastest way to apply filters after you have activated auto filter is by selecting the cell that you would want, let's say James, and I'm gonna hit the shortcut Alt 4, and that is going to apply filter. Why 4? Because I customize auto filter on the fourth position. Now you can go ahead to any other column and then maybe use Alt 4 again to filter subsequently on all the other columns as well. Now, this is auto filter in its vanilla format. In case you wanna take a look at a couple of more interesting tricks on auto filter, I have done another video, which you can watch after watching the full video till the end and take a look at more interesting tricks around auto filter. Next mind blowing trick, dynamic ranges. This is an absolute killer, take a look. So here I have some names and some months right here and some random numbers in between that. And I perhaps wanna take a total right here in the columns uh, and here in the rows as well. So how do we do that? I'm gonna maybe select all of this data, one row extra for the totals at the bottom, one row extra for the totals on the right. I'm gonna press the shortcut Alt is equals to. That's not the trick. But in case you send the spreadsheet to somebody and that somebody is allowed to add more number of salespeople, what they're gonna do is they're gonna insert the number of rows in between. If they were to add the salesperson in between, not really at the adjacent cell where the data ends, maybe right here and write 10, the problem is that the total is not going to update and it still runs up till row number nine. Now, I would want to create some dynamic range so that the total keeps taking a look at what data has been added, no matter wherever, and it kind of takes the total of every cell which is before the last cell. How do we do such a thing? Now, you might have heard of dynamic ranges using offset, index, or any dynamic spill formulas, but this is absolutely crazy. Now, to be able to explain this concept, what you need to understand is a concept called cell naming. If you know it, that's amazing. If you don't know it, here's a quick rundown on it. So in Excel, what you can do is you can select a cell, go to the name box right here and declare that cell, not with the address, but by a name. So I can perhaps call this cell as Chandeep, press enter, and this cell is named as Chandeep. Now I can reference the cell that I gave the name as Chandeep anywhere in the spreadsheet, and this is gonna show Chandeep, and because Chandeep cell is blank, it's just gonna give a zero. Nevertheless, that is cell naming. Now we're gonna use cell naming technique in a slightly different way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the formulas tab. In the formulas tab, I'll click on name manager. Once I go into the name manager, all the names that you give in the spreadsheet get collected here. I'm gonna make a new name. In the new name, I'm gonna call the name as previous cell, right? And here is where I declared the formula or whatever the reference of the cell is. I'm gonna say that, hey, I'm not trying to name the cell in which I am currently in. However, I'm trying to name the cell which is just above that, the previous cell. So I can reference that. What cell is this? This is G16, the cell previous. So I'm gonna say G and then 16 and then write an exclamation sign at the start. So exclamation at the start is going to make it available on all the sheets and G16, no dollar sign. So it's gonna be like a relative referencing. That's it. I'm gonna click on okay and just click on close and I'm back at my data. Now, tinkering with the sum function about the cell naming that we have done. Let's make use of that. I will say that my sum function starts the range at C4, good enough, but please do not add at nine. Please end at the previous cell. Now the previous cell is dynamic. That means even if you move the formula down, it's going to again pick up the previous cell. And this is actually now going to update the total to 174. Even if you were to take this row, 
cut it, control X, and then paste it a couple of rows down, and still add another value B with let's say 20, it's still going to update the total magically. And if somebody takes a look at the formula, it's, they're just going to go bonkers. Similar stuff that we have done over here, you could also do it over here to take a look at the totals on the left here. And you can say something like cell left and the totals are going to be dynamic again. That's pretty dope. Now that you've learned the named range technique, let's just take a look at another very sick technique using the same approach. Now, I want to do a cross tab lookup. Let's just say that I'm looking at Timmy and I'm trying to take a look at his March number. And I have to do some sort of lookup to be able to get to this number 31. And I want it as easy as just typing the name Timmy and the month of March to be able to get the value for March for that particular salesman. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create auto named ranges. Select the data and I'm gonna use the shortcut control shift F3. I believe there is also an option in the formulas tab which is create from selection and that's the shortcut control shift f3 but i just like using shortcuts so control shift f3 and what we're trying to say is that hey this entire column is going to be named as jan this entire row is going to be named as james so on and so forth and once you click on okay this entire data has been named right so this entire thing has been called jan this entire thing has been called feb this entire thing has been called james so on and so forth all right now here comes the magic let's just say that you're trying to find bob so i'm going to say equals to bob that's the name range, give a space, and then I'm gonna say, hey, I want the data for, let's say the month of April. So APR, press enter. Because of that space, it's just going to fetch the intersecting value. Press enter, and that's your 21 that you wanna find. That's pretty dope again. Trick number four, adding data to your charts really fast. Take a look at this data, same data, some salesmen, there's a shoe product here, and I've built the chart of all of these salesmen and the shoe right here. Now, while I was building it, I perhaps forgot to add the belts data in the same chart. Now, how would you add the belts data really fast to the same chart? Some people are going to maybe click on the chart and then extend the range from here to here. But let's just say I'm being absolutely cruel here. I'm gonna add a column in between. I'm just gonna call these as notes, which you can't really move. And these are some random notes of my cruelty that I'm showing right here. So how do you add the bells to the chart? You're gonna love the shortcut because you use the shortcut day in and out. Take a look. I'm gonna maybe select the entire range right here and press Control C to copy that. I'm gonna select the chart and literally just press Control V to paste the data in the chart and the data gets added. However, the problem in the chart at the moment is that I do not really get to know what is the blue and what is the red. So it's just ideal for me to just go to the plus sign right here and activate the legend to just talk about what's the shoe data and what's the belt data. But that's pretty kick-ass. All right, before I proceed to the last trick, I wanna give a quick shout out in the middle of the video about my DAX and my Power Query training courses. I do a lot of Power BI stuff using DAX and Power Query and data modeling in case you're interested and you are Power BI beginner, you wanna build up your fundamentals first and then maybe proceed on to solving even more dense, more complicated problems, even of your own data. I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's gonna be super awesome. All right, let's just move on to trick number five. Trick number five, format your charts really, really fast. Now you're gonna find yourself in situations where you have to make a presentation and all the charts look spick and span and they should all match the formatting the corporate formatting that you have so let's just say that i spent some time to format this chart i've changed the colors i've changed the labels made it look a certain way and this is what i would want all my charts to look like but the next time I get a new data, pretty much similar, I select the data, use the shortcut Alt F1 to make another chart. The chart looks something like this. At the moment, the chart's formatting is nowhere close to the format that I would want. And I have to spend all the five, seven minutes to format the second chart, then format the third chart, so on and so forth. I know I understand the pain, but here is what you're going to do. So I'm going to select on the chart and I'm going to press the shortcut Control C. No, I'm not gonna press Control V. However, I'm gonna press the shortcut Alt E S, the shortcut to do paste special. If you don't know the shortcut, you can go over to the home tab, paste and paste special. And guess what? Paste special also works on the charts. This time I'm gonna say, hey, I only want to paste the formats. And this is pretty amazing. The formats get pasted. All right, that's been it. Now it's your turn. Do I get a shame or did you not know any of the tricks and you want to maybe comment out which tricks did you not know of? Please comment. I'm very, very interested to know. In the end, I'd like to leave you with another very interesting video that I have done on pivot table tricks and you're going to find that phenomenally helpful of the very interesting pivot table tricks that I'm discussing. You're going to find it somewhere on the screen. Please click on that and go watch that video as well. Thanks so much for sticking all around and I'll catch you again in the pivot table tricks video.